Hi, I'm George and I'm a registered respiratory therapist. What I'd like to talk to you today about is oral pharyngeal airways, also called OPAs. Now an OPA is a basic style type of airway that is inserted into the patient's oral cavity to rest in the patient's oral pharynx. And the whole purpose of this airway is to maintain patency in the patient's pharynx. So the whole intent is for the distal portion of this airway to rest between the back of the pharynx or the posterior pharynx and the base of the tongue. Commonly used in soft tissue obstructions, for example, when a patient loses consciousness and the tongue rests backwards or posteriorly on the posterior part of the pharynx, occluding the patient's upper airway. So we can use this airway to alleviate an obstruction like that. And the key thing is, because this is inserted through the patient's mouth, is to ensure that the patient is in fact unconscious and unresponsive. Because the last thing you want to do is insert an airway like this into your patient that happens to have a gag reflex. Not going to be good. So let's take a look at the airway itself. Now before I go any further, I am shooting this video by myself with the use of a remote control. So I might be out of the screen at some point in time or the focus might be off or I might be staring between the camera and the little monitor on the side of it just try to get my placement. So let's look at the oropharyngeal airway or OPA. This is an OPA. There's a few parts to the OPA that you should be familiar with because it'll help you to insert the device properly. The first part is called the flange. That's this wide part right over here. Could you take a good look at that? The flange. Now the flange is used to prevent the airway from slipping further into the patient's own real airway. So it prevents the OPA from going any further into the patient. It usually rests against the, t the lips or the patient's teeth, depending on the mouth opening. The next part of the OPA, right over here, this is a really hard piece of plastic that's included in the design. This part of the OPA is the bite block, okay? The bite block right over here. So if a patient clenches down with their teeth or their gums, they can't squish the OPA or occlude it, you know, thus affecting patency. The last part of the OPA is this channeled, softer, it's not soft entirely, but it's a little bit softer than the bite guard. This forms the remainder of the OPA in the distal portion right over here. Okay? It's this part that should be sitting somewhere between the base of the tongue and the posterior pharynx. You can kind of note that the channel is open, so this OPA is hollow all the way through its length. Okay? So, the whole function of that channel is to allow gas to go through the OPA as well as around the OPA. Or if you really had to, you could technically put a smaller size suction catheter through that to suction out the patient's uh, posterior pharynx as well. You can also put a suction catheter because the mouth is open because of that bite block along the side of the OPA to help facilitate suctioning as well if your patient's got a lot of secretion sitting back there. So the oral pharyngeal airway, OPA. Now, OPAs come in different types of kits. This is but one example of a kit that we have here for use. Okay? We don't use this on our patients. We use this for demonstration purposes on mannequins. But you can also get them individually or other types of kits that might have some sort of color coding system. These are just a bunch of different types of oral pharyngeal airways made by some manufacturer. And they're all different colors. The colors help to identify what size you're using or grabbing when you need to use it on a patient. Now this manufacturer has, for example, a size 8 is color-coded that type of green. So this manufacturer has green as a size representing size 8. Now other manufacturers also make their own OPAs and those manufacturers may not necessarily have use the same colors to represent the same size as other manufacturers. So a size 8 that this manufacturer makes may not necessarily be the same color somebody else makes. Their size 8 could be a red color, for example, or maybe an orange or something else. So don't use the colors that the OPAs come in as the uh, telltale sizing for all OPA manufacturers. You still have to size the OPA to the patient. And that's what we're going to do next. So I'm going to move back here a little bit and find my remote control. We're going to zoom in, and I want to show you how to properly size the OPA to the patient now. 
So there's a number of different ways that you can size it. And I'm going to show you the way that uh, I size the OPAs to the patient. Now, obviously, whenever you're working in a patient care environment, you want to make sure that you do your proper protective stuff first, right? So make sure you wash your hands before you go to the patient and touch the patient. You should be wearing any kind of protective gear that you need, like uh, possibly safety glasses, mask, mask with face shield, uh, gloves for sure. You may need to use a, a gown if that's a particular case or anything that is going to be beneficial to protect the patient from you, but also you from the patient, right? So it works both ways there. So make sure you have the right type of gloves on and personal protective equipment that you, you need. So I'm gonna grab some gloves. And once you get the gloves, we're gonna size this airway again, like I said, to the patient. So I'm just putting my gloves on right over here. And let's grab the OA, OPAs and size them to the patient. So the way that we size the OPA to our patients, and again, it might be different depending on where you're from. Let me just zoom in here a bit. There we go. You simply take the OPA, grab the flange, and put the flange at the corner of the mouth right over here. And then you take the OPA in this fashion and see where the distal tip of the OPA winds up. And the correct sizing is from the corner of the mouth to the patient's earlobe. So if I put this OPA here in this fashion, it kind of extends beyond the patient's earlobe. So this OPA is probably a little bit too large. Now if I grab another OPA, say for example, this size, obviously that size of OPA is too small. Again, the flange is at the corner of the mouth, right there. The tip rests right in this region here between the patient's earlobe and the mouth. So obviously this one's way too small. So just like Goldilocks, you have to find the one that's just right. So let's try this orpharyngeal airway. Line it up to the corner of the mouth. And you can see this one pretty much makes it right to the patient's earlobe. So this looks like it's the correctly sized OPA for this patient. Another way of sizing it is to take it from the corner of the mouse, mouth, find the angle of the jaw, and see if the airway extends roughly two fingers or two centimeters beyond the angle of the jaw. If it does that, it's also the correctly sized airway. All right. So once we've sized the airway to our patient, the next thing we need to do is we need to, we need to insert that airway properly. All right. So let's take a look at how we insert that airway. Now, what we've been trained to do in this particular area is we take the OPA, we hold it by the flange in this fashion right over here, and then we simply place it upside down into the patient and we're running along the top of the patient's mouth feeling the hard palate. Once the hard palate transitions to the soft palate, you simply rotate the device 180 degrees and continue to advance it until it stops on the patient's lips. No need to force it down. If it's the right size, it should just wind up there anyway. And then the flange itself protects or prevents the OPA from penetrating deeper inside the patient's airway. Right? So that's one way that we could insert the airway into the patient. Another way that you can insert the airway into the patient is to simply start off, oh, got my finger in there, start off in the corner of the mouth like this, insert the airway laterally, go in roughly half the distance, and then transition to the forward position of the OPA and continue to advance it till it rests against, or the flange rests against the patient's lips or teeth. That's the other way. And a third way that you could insert an OPA into the patient is simply grab some tongue depressors. You would be facing the patient. Place the tongue depressors in the patient's mouth. Let me just grab some tongue depressors. Typically you might need one or two or three tongue depressors, but place the tongue depressors in the patient's mouth in this fashion, pushing the tongue down, and then simply insert the oropharyngeal airway beyond the patient's tongue in that fashion. Okay? And those are the three different ways of placing the OPA into the patient. Now, remove the OPA. You kind of saw me take the OPA out a couple of times there, but to remove the OPA when it's required, or no longer required, it, you, all you have to simply do is grab the flange and pull it out and note the curvature of my hand as I pull it out. Ensure that you're pulling it out in this fashion so that you don't cause un, any undue harm or trauma to your patient and it's more comfortable for them as well. 
take the OPA out when it's no longer required for your patients. So hopefully they have uh, an intact airway, there's patency there, and then they will maintain it themselves. They're awake and conscious, uh, they have a gag reflex, they're able to protect their lower airway, they're able to cough, and they can ventilate on their, their own fine. Okay, so we need to make sure of that before we take the OPAs out. Now let's talk a little bit about the hazards that are associated with OPAs and the sizing. So essentially, when we size the OPAs, we know it's really important that we get the right size so that we've got the right size in there opening up the, the patient's own physical lower airway. Now what happens if we have an OPA that's too big? Well sometimes what can happen, if you have an OPA that's slightly too big, it could possibly hit the patient's laryngeal structures and elicit a response from the patient like a laryngeal reflex or it could catch the epiglottis and possibly push the epiglottis down into the patient's glottic opening or heaven forbid the distal tip winds up somewhere by the patient's vocal cords right because natural curvature is to have that airway come more anterior that distal end so if it's down too far it could start affecting the, the larynx and the glottis and the epiglottis and, and those structures as well on the other side, if you have an OPA that's too small, what could end up happening then is that OPA's distal tip, if it's too small, could catch the back portion of the tongue, not the backward side of the tongue, but the back of the tongue, and further wedge it in your posterior pharynx, completely occluding that particular area, and then it's not going to function. So remember, look for the correct size, size it properly. Once you put the airway into your patient, you should go back and reassess your patient, make sure in fact that you have a benefit of what you've done for your patient. So if the patient's trying to ventilate on their own, you should see their breathing improve and they should be ventilating fine with their spontaneous ventilations. If they're not breathing at that point in time, you want to make sure that you grab your manual resuscitator and ventilate your patient until a more appropriate means of ventilating your patient is established. All right, so OPAs, oropharyngeal airways. They're indicated when you want to open up and create patency in the back of the patient's pharynx because there's a soft tissue obstruction, or your patient's unresponsive and unconscious and cannot remove secretions on their own. But remember, when you're using an oral pharyngeal airway or OPA, always make sure that your patient has no gag reflex and can tolerate the insertion of the OPA as well as the uh, maintenance of it inside their airway. That's it. I hope you enjoyed this uh, video on oral pharyngeal airways. Look forward to bringing another one to you soon. And if you have any questions please, or comments, please note that on my Facebook page, George RRT. I'm also respiratory, registered respiratory therapist and rancher. Rancher videos coming at some point in time soon. Have a good day. Bye.